So folks, one thing that I frequently said, I've said it over and over again really, is that when you want to look at how much trouble old Donnie is in, his legal team is the canary in the coal mine. They are the signal because when they are in trouble, when they are scrambling, when they're facing their own personal legal issues, that is a sign that the noose is getting closer and closer to old Donnie's neck. And that's exactly what's happening right now to Trump's lawyers, be they current, former, future, whatever. It is absolutely blowing up on them. I want to do a couple things here. One, a new analysis, a breaking analysis makes it crystal clear that Trump's legal team are growing frustrated with him and how he continues to make their job impossible, specifically by how he incriminates himself time and time again. And then get to the juicy bit, which is that it's going down so hard, so fast for old Donnie and his entire legal world that one of his lawyers didn't even show up to their court date. And guys, they could be in big trouble because of it. Um, Brandon, first, let me start with you. I mean, first, let's start on this obviously ludicrous idea that there's a kind of like, again, I think their theory of classification that it's like a little like, um, it's like the mystery of of the <laughs> of the communion host. Like, it's, there's some moment, there's some, like, m there's some miraculous moment when, the, when it gets transubstantiated from classified to declassified, when the president touches it or he wills it so telepathically. So first, I guess it's worthwhile just, like, saying why that's ludicrous, which I think it is. What do you think? Well, you, you know, even if the theory itself is, is ludicrous or sort of, um, it is uh, almost, I would say, unknowable, in terms of the criminal charges itself, it ultimately should have, at best, a negligible impact, uh, if any impact whatsoever. Say more. So, you know, ultimately, declassification, whether the documents were classified or, or unclassified, it doesn't actually uh, affect the three charges at issue here. In fact, two of the charges don't have anything to do with the sensitivity of the documents at all. The one that could it's involved in the Espionage Act. It also doesn't use the term classified. And what I'd say is, because I think we need to be careful, if the documents were declassified, it could, could have an impact. But the notion of a blanket declassification order that was secret and not communicated to anyone, um, it, it's unlikely to have any impact for reasons that we could talk about at the after show. Okay. Well, Joyce, the, the other point here is that it does seem like the basic contours of the crime as alleged, again, according to the part of the Espionage Act that's cited uh, in that uh, in the, the, the parts of the warrant that we got to see, right? He does seem to basically be copping to all of it, right? Basically, it's whoever lawfully having possession of, you know, a long list of uh, sort of uh, 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 categories of things, right? And it calls it national defense or information relating to the national defense, which information the possessor has reason to believe could be used to the injury of the U.S., willfully retains the same and fails to deliver it on demand to the officer or employee of the United States entitled to receive it. Like, that's the crime at issue, and it does seem like he's saying that he did that. You know, sometimes defense lawyers have these difficult moments with their clients where they really want them to stop talking and they won't. But Trump is an example of that on steroids. This is someone who just straps a megaphone to his mouth, goes on national television, tweets. And Brandon knows, like I do, that somewhere in the Department of Justice, someone is making note of all of these statements, cataloging them, capturing video, and they will be played back against the former president if he is ever indicted and if the case goes to trial. Because these statements, quite frankly, are very, very damaging to him. Beyond that, they damage the credibility of, of his lawyers. His lawyers were on the one hand in court saying, Judge, we can't talk about declassification. It's inappropriate to force us right. to talk about that. The, our client needs to retain the right to talk about that later. And here Trump is out on TV saying, sure, I used a magic wand and did double secret in, in my mind declassification. So it really is um, a mess. The question, and I think Brandon points this out, is whether it becomes a crime that not only the government has the evidence to prosecute, but is similar, is in the range of cases in this area that get prosecuted. Typically, there has to be some plus factor. Here, you've got a lot of obstruction of justice, which may well count. Yeah, and, and to your point, Joyce, this is this is a theme. I remember this happened a lot in the in the aftermath of the election in 2020. Um, 
Trump or others would make uh, outlandish claims about the levels of fraud that wouldn't actually show up in the lawyers' filings, right? Because as as sort of irresponsible as the lawyers were, they were bound a little bit, I think, by some sense of legal ethics and saying just outright falsehoods, right, in, in their actual filings. What she says there, I, I love Joyce, she's one of my favorite commentators, is she just cuts through the BS and says, look, every lawyer wants a client to shut up sometimes. But with Donald Trump, you especially want that, but it's almost like an impossible demand. You might not even be able to use a genie's wish on getting Donald Trump to shut up and stop incriminating himself. Because again, it's bad for your client. Like if you legitimately want to represent your client and keep them out of jail, keep them from losing cases and all of that, you want to help them. But also it puts you in a very difficult position because now you're forced, at least in the court of public opinion, to lie your ass off for your client. But that way you get super embarrassed in court when you actually have to say, we don't actually believe these things or say, you know, it's unclear and hem and haw your way through a trial or directly commit perjury and risk going to jail, risk losing your law license and all of those sorts of things. And so what we've seen from Trump lawyers now and in the past is that they've ruined their entire lives lying for old Donnie. And that came to a head yesterday when one of Donald Trump's lawyers specifically, you remember her, the Kraken lady didn't even show up for court. It says that she was a no show. Maybe it was some sort of confusion, but I interpret this as a purposeful no show as Tristan Snell, a legal expert, seems to imply when he says breaking Sidney Powell no showed her grand jury date in the Fulton County, Georgia investigation into election tampering. Looks like the Kraken is now on the lam. And what they're specifically wanting to talk to her about is her role in this broader scheme to overturn Georgia. Because remember, at for a time at least, she was officially on Donald Trump's team. And then even after she wasn't on his team, she was still working on his broader behalf politically, you know, ideologically. And then also, you know, with all of these other Trump ecosystem people trying to either overturn results or find the fraud. And specifically, she was at least indirectly involved into that recent scandal where Trump affiliated people and Trump aligned people maybe broke into an office and maybe tampered with machines. One of the pieces of reporting says video shows several people being led into county elections office to download elections data from voting machines and an election server. State investigators call it criminal behavior and say Sidney Powell paid for it all. It's unclear when Powell will be rescheduled to testify. Former Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows is scheduled to testify next week. So I don't know if a punishment is directly going to come down. Maybe she's going to be able to argue that she was confused that this was some sort of misunderstanding. Maybe she won't get punished this time. But I think it's awfully suspicious, guys, that Trump lawyers, current and former, are panicking and missing court dates. That's not a good sign for Trump or for them.